again and I'm here continuing this amazing video log podcast series that you all love today talking about something else than Second Life yet still about Second Life um, that something is Minecraft and I'm mainly talking about this because of um, the good people at the Meta Reality Podcast which is discontinued and I just checked the website is unavailable but um, they in several of their last episodes have been puzzling over the success and the appeal of Minecraft without really getting an answer to it and so I did what I had to and I just got it and played it and um, well I guess what I want to do is share you share my experiences with you from a second lifers uh, perspective First off, you can get Minecraft from the website at minecraft.net. The business model of Minecraft is very straightforward. You buy the game and, um, well, you play it and presumably you own it. It is 19 euros 95. I don't know if they have a different pricing in US dollars or if it's just converted into that um, you can also get all kinds of weird merchandise stuff from their website much of which is uh, creeper based um, but we want to talk about the game because Minecraft in contrast to Second Life is pretty much a game at least I played it as such um, it has two different modes, single player and multiplayer, um, both of which can be played in two different ways. Um, one of the is the is the survival mode, the other is the creative mode. Um, I started out with the survival mo mode, and I found out that for me that was the m more appealing one. The creative mode pretty much p puts all the the elements of the game into your hand and you can do with them whatever you want. You know, no no holds barred, no boundaries. So you just uh, play with it and build stuff with it. Which is pretty much similar to, similar to the second life building tools in that you can, you know, you have no no set goal and no boundaries. You just use the tools you're given and your imagination the tools in Minecraft are just much much more restrictive and uh, crude compared to Second Life even compared to the Prims in Second Life let me show you if you start with with Minecraft um, you can create a new world at the beginning you have to create a new world and the game will create a procedurally generated world randomly for you um, you can check the game mode here and set several other options here. Uh, let's call this one. Um, this is the first cool thing about Minecraft that Second Life doesn't have. It is a procedurally generated world that is random. So every world is, or every time you play and create a new world, it is different from before. You never know how you start out where you start out, what the um, world will look like, and um, what your chances are going to be. It turns out I started this time in a snow-covered landscape on top of a hill. You can see in the distance that things are still rising. Um, Minecraft is a Java game, and as such, has this, I don't know my experience with Java games is that they the, the the real cool thing about Java is that it runs on any system so I've been playing Minecraft not just on my Mac but also on my Linux computer without any problems and with the same um, kind of performance and um, 
the drawbacks is that Java always seems to be a little more laggy than anything else. You see that you start out without having anything um, and no instructions. Um, it's not even that you start out, like in Second Life, in some kind of a tutorial or something. The game just throws you in and it just gives you these little tooltips on the top right, like press E to open your inventory. Oh, I'm sorry. I think I chose creative mode. Let me go and chose a different mode. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't talk, talk about hardcore mode, um, which is where you don't can't uh, respawn after you die. Okay, create a new world. <clears throat> It just gives you these little tips at the top right of the screen what how the, the basic um, functions of the game like E to open inventory there is nothing in your inventory um, this time we start out in some kind of a hill place and so the first time I, I played it I just was wandering around aimlessly you know doing what I'm used to from first person shooters which is not much uh, I know that Clicking the mouse button will shoot something. In this case, it just hacks onto stuff. And I started out picking up a lot of flowers because it seems it seemed to me like these were the only things that actually could could influence. If I clicked onto like a piece of ground or like a tree, it didn't seem to have any effect. And so I was pretty much. Um, aimless and clueless about what to do in this world. Um, I found out that pressing space made you jump, but um, in order to really play the game I had to refer to the Minecraft wiki, which is some kind of a great resource for all things Minecraft. It is at minecraftwiki.net and it gives you instructions and tutorials and introductory videos and stuff and to be perfectly honest with you I don't like watching reading stuff first before I go into a game or or watch YouTube videos which is which is much which is even worse for me I, I don't want to watch YouTube videos just to find out how to play the game I want to play the game instead so uh, you know, to my own chagrin, I just ran around aimlessly until I finally sat down and watched some introductory... No, I didn't watch anything, actually. I just read introductions and um, to find out that in order to do something, you had to actually hold the mouse button pressed, which was something that I... I don't know, for some reason didn't think about, so it also gave you some some first steps on how to best uh, start out with your first day, uh, how to securely survive that um, and build from there by first gathering wood and then using the wood to create some tools which in turn you use to create um, other things. I created a crafting table, which you can use to make other stuff out of your wood. Like tools, shovel or weapons like a sword all of this you do without having any clue about what you are supposed to be doing in this world and so you just you know very randomly try out things and see what they do. Okay. 
the very one nice thing about Minecraft is that um, the world is so vast that it's actually quite impressive. You see that it's not very... It doesn't have any great fancy graphics. Everything is built out of voxels, which is um, just cubes that are differently textured and, you know, very, very crudely textured, which makes it incredibly easy to render for even for for not very powerful computers. It is still running at, at decent speeds and also allows it to be as large as it is with having draw distances that go almost into infinity, um, which really is at times very impressive. The, what, you, what you figure out pretty soon is that as soon as um, the night breaks, you will have to have a secure place to stay because at night monsters come out and try to eat you or kill you in any way, fashion or form. And um, dying in Minecraft means not that the game is over, but um, that you have that you respawn at your original point where you've been born, which is in some cases much worse than just dying because um, if you have strayed from that point, um, you have, well, first of all, you, you have a hard time finding where you've where we, where you've gone to um, again, and especially if you have already amassed a large amount of of inventory, um, you want to find where you died so you can pick up all your inventory, which is scattered uh, around at the place you died, and um, you only have a certain amount of time to gather all that until it just vanishes and then is gone. So, <clears throat> one of the first things you want to do on your first date is get some food by, for example, killing um, an animal that is one of the animals that are populating the world. In this case, it was a chicken. Let me get another one just for good measure. Um, come here. There you go. And um, get some way of some some source of light for the night, either a lava pool or create some torches for yourself. Um, torches can be made by out of out of wood <clears throat> and coal. So finding wood is not the, that great a challenge. Finding coal is a greater challenge depending on where you start out and then um, find a somewhat secure place to spend the night uh, you can later create a bed which makes it easier to spend the night for you you don't have to wait until it's over you just go to bed and go to sleep and wake up and it's um, daybreak again but at first you will have to make do with what you've given uh, which isn't much and uh, in many cases you won't have the time to create everything you need on your first day timing is important in, in Minecraft you have to you have no way of measuring time at first, other than the, the sun um, position. And uh, the day is over pretty soon. It just takes a couple of minutes and it's nightfall. And by that time, you are well advised to have gathered as much as you need and found a good place to stay. As you can see, the world is very diverse and very large and um, that is the one thing I like about Minecraft you can <clears throat> discover new areas new impressive formations of scenery 
just by walking around and uh, literally expanding your horizon. There are sheep. Sheep are good to make uh, a bed because you need their wool. So the difference between Minecraft and Second Life from the onset is that Minecraft gives you purpose. It gives you something to do right from the start. It doesn't explain much about how to do it and what it is that you're supposed to do, but you have immediately something that you you can actually have must be doing in order to to survive. So without having much of a clue what your place in this world is, you just start, you know, digging and using tools and using the world as good as you can. I'm really, really lucky here for having these uh, coal deposits right on the surface and not having to dig long to get to them because um, many times you start out in an area and there's no coal to be found easily so you just have to randomly start digging in on the off chance that you might find some underground somewhere and you know in time to actually you know before nightfall preferably once you've found a place you better make sure it's well lit because um, monsters don't like light so wherever there is light they don't spawn, which means they don't appear in the game. Um, it doesn't mean that they can't go there from somewhere else where there where it's dark, but um, light makes an area much safer. At first, there is a lot of things to discover in Minecraft. A lot of things to do, a lot of things that you have to find out what they're there for, why, how they work, um, what their purpose is. Uh, you can shape the world to your liking with the tools that you're given by, you know, mining and uh, doing agriculture, um, creating your own home in the world out of blocks and uh, mining for goods. So the nice thing is it is a it is a survival game with with purpose and uh, goals other than second life in which you start pretty much having to make your own your own purpose having to find your own purpose in world um so that i think it is much friendlier to the users, to, to players. Uh, it also gives it a different, that was a creeper, a different kind of feeling. Um, y 
as you can see, if you die, you start out where you um, first started out, or approximately where you first started out. Now, you, now I have to find my way again to where I had my oh-so-secure hiding place. The problem I encountered with Minecraft is that after a given period of time, after you've been digging enough and, and doing enough uh, and discovered enough, it gets to a point where you you don't know what else to do now um, to keep you interested. I. You know, I dug all the way down to the bedrock after a while, and uh, I had gathered diamonds and gold and silver, no, not silver, uh, iron, and had discovered all these great formations underground uh, and felt like I've seen it all. I've created my first enchantment table. I've enchanted items. I've, and at that point, I found, kind of found that I, you know, I, I lacked purpose. I, you know, I could have gone on doing that, doing that, forever. Um, but you know, it didn't feel right. It didn't feel like I, I wanted to, because. It felt repetitive. It felt like like there was no nowhere it would be going anymore from that point onward, and that's where I pretty much stopped and just briefly tried out um, the other modes, uh, creative mode, which pretty much puts you in that position right from the onset by giving you all the tools and everything that exists in the world, and taking away the challenges of survival mode, trying to stay alive, trying to stay healthy and fed and trying to gather your supplies on your own and you just you even can fly and uh, you just can create whatever you want to create and then I've tried out multiplayer only to find out that multiplayer is well, it's kind of interesting because it um, it doesn't have a central Minecraft server Minecraft itself doesn't uh, run servers, but it gives you the ability to run your own Minecraft server or, you know, connect to any other community run server that you find, which are many, and you have to spend some time on the web to find a good one. Um, but once I was there, it felt very well, even more pointless. I, I didn't know what to do. All the people around me seemed like they just have gotten all the upgrades and, and were running around in enchanted diamond armor and weapons. And, you know, it seemed like there wasn't much point to it. So, um, I think Minecraft and Second Life both come to a point where uh, the player needs to the user, player, resident, however you might call them, needs to find out what it is they want to do in world. And um, at that point, Second Life actually does a much better job because it gives users the tools to uh, go beyond the scope of Second Life and create whatever they want and make it make it rock. Um, Minecraft gives you very limited tools that are soon um, at, at their um, soon depleted or not depleted but you come to their limits very soon um, the limits of Second Life, I've yet to explore. I'm, I'm 
still learning, making things that I couldn't do. So, in the end, Second Life OpenSim is much more rewarding to me than Minecraft, and I didn't play Minecraft very long. Um, I can understand people who do play it for quite some time. I don't think it is in any way a rival to Second Life. I think it appeals to different kinds of of um, players, users. Um, not necessarily radically different kinds of players. I think people who enjoy Second Life can also enjoy Minecraft and vice versa. It just has a different feel to it and a different purpose and a different... Um, dynamic um, I think if if Second Life or any open sim grid would provide its users from the start with something that gives them purpose or the same purpose or a similar purpose as Minecraft does you can see that when the sun goes up the monsters start burning until they are dead you can also see that I just crossed the line from a hilly region into a desert region. Um, and you can see that the monsters will, will look for shadowy places where the sun won't burn them. Also, creepers aren't affected by this in any way, shape or form. They are always shitty. Um, as I said, I enjoyed Minecraft. I enjoy mostly nowadays the vastness and the beauty of the landscape. It's hard to believe if you look at it and it's all blocky, but in places it is incredibly breathtaking in its scope and form, especially when you like dig underground and you run into your first ravine that just stretches into darkness on all sides and and shape shadows are moving in the distance and you don't know what it is or you are in the in the hill biome and they have formed a a weird and surreal structure where where hills are like forming a bridge between each other things like that you encounter frequently and they're always always nice to look at and they always give you like a feeling of, of um, place a feeling of, of making your your place creating your home your um, shaping the the natural environment into a place that you can call home and uh, seeing trying to see where you where you can get from from there this is a natural entrance to a cave which can be exploited as you I don't know if you've seen that this is um, iron ore which can be mined and turned into iron which in turn can be used to produce more durable uh, tools and weapons so there are a lot of, of nice mechanics to Minecraft that Second Life lacks and I think would kind of profit from if you know there were some kind of a of a or if if you would want to give it some kind of a game aspect i don't think it would go over very well with the existing second life user base you know any direction anyone would give to second life would be the wrong direction because a lot of people won't wouldn't like it so i think it's good to have an alternative life like minecraft that gives you some kind of a of a direction and appeals to all the people who would like that in a game. Um, 
without, you know, I mean, Second Life doesn't need to be everything for everyone. It can be, but uh, I think there are places and uh, purposes for other games as well. Minecraft being one of them. I just found that on the long run, Second Life is much more rewarding and much more interesting to me, and Minecraft really got kind of boring after a while. This is all that ever happened to me in Minecraft. Thank you very much for listening, and uh, I hope I'll see you soon. Thank you.